Hey guys, God bless you. I want to talk to you again today about freedom. The Lord has been leading me into understanding the freedom that he wants for me in every level, every area of my life on deeper levels and higher ways than I, than I thought were possible. And there's a lot of friction. There's a lot of pushback from the enemy and from strongholds in my own life that are resisting that freedom. But I know that this is what the Lord is uh, has created me for and has created you for as a child of God to be walking in complete freedom. And I know that he takes us from glory to glory and that the, the longer we walk with him and the more um, the closer that we get to him, the more submitted our life is to him, the higher uh, will he'll take us into that experience of freedom. But I believe that that is something that he wants for us to not just wait to have an, for another day because the the burdens or the strongholds seem too big and seem, the giants seem too much in our face. He wants us to pursue and press into that freedom and to uh, labor into that freedom. And the laboring is that labor into rest that's talked about in Hebrews, that, that we would push into that freedom with all we have. And so I have been studying um, under one of the pastors that I study under. He is leading us through the book of Galatians to talk about freedom. And in Galatians chapter 5 is where I'm going to talk to you guys and give you a couple keys that the Lord um, showed me in this chapter and how it relates to not going back into bondage. For many of you, you have gone so far with the Lord and you have um, been saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, whatever he shows you, yes, Lord. And there is, um, you've, you've said all of your yeses, right? And, but, and the Lord has seen that and he wants you to continue and to press forward. But maybe there's something like, like a giant standing in the way right now, something that just seems too big um, and you just feel like you're at a, a standstill. And the Lord wants you to not go back and to actually uh, completely break off chains that maybe are still a little bit there. Even though you've been saying, yes, he might be showing you areas or demonic strongholds, attacks, whether from your present decisions, or lifestyle, or your past, from um, circumstances that you had no control over. There might be things that the Lord is showing you. I want you to be completely free of those things as we move in and go to higher levels um, and in this building in the kingdom. And so in Galatians 5, Paul is talking to the, the body of Christ, the Galatians, um, the, the church in Galatia, and he is basically upset because he led them with the purity of the gospel to faith in Christ. And they experienced that freedom, but, but some crept in while he was away and tried to deceive the people and say, yes, I know you're, you're a believer in Christ now, but have you done this yet? Or have you been circumcised like us? Or are you following um, these specific teachings from this specific person? And they started to put uh, weights and shackles back on the people that caused them to kind of be sucked out of that freedom and, and to take their mind out of that place of complete freedom and peace in the Lord and take them into a burdensome elementary, as the word describes it, worldly way of thinking of, um, I know I'm saved, but there's something in me that feels like I still need to do these things or be this far ahead in my walk with the Lord to be counted as as a, a righteous one, as, as a true follower. And the truth of the matter, which Paul goes over and over with them, is you are saved because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else will save you. There is no burden that the Lord puts on you. It is just the faith that you have that makes you righteous because you are covered by the blood of Christ when you believe on him. And he, there's not like I can earn to be a little more and more saved. And, and Paul's really taking away that concept. And he says in Galatians 5, it is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. If you accept circumcision, which the Lord was highlighting to me, circumcision for us nowadays would be like religious structures, religious, the way that we think we're supposed to do church and the way we think we're supposed to um, be a righteous Christian or even the worldly 
uh, worldly standards and uh, cultural structures, those things, if we take those on, they will not only lead us back into slavery, even though we're already set free, but they will, then we won't see Christ as any advantage to us. And this really hit home for me because I never want to be in a place that I don't see the value of Christ Jesus, my Savior, that I don't see that his sacrifice and his lordship and who he is over my life as enough or as everything to me. I don't never want to be in a place where I think that I can add to what the Lord Jesus has done for me to become more righteous, to become more worthy of his love. And that is what these false teachers were coming in, these uh, teachers to burden the people. And he says to them that for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. It is only the faith in your heart, in your soul that has said yes to Christ and that is out of love for him, following him. That is your, um, that is the only way to salvation is faith in Christ that comes out of your love for him. And he says, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And he's talking to the Galatians and he's saying, you were doing so well. You were saying your yes to the Lord. You were walking in freedom. And then there was that, that person or that environment or maybe that job change or that, or that church environment, that church leader, whoever it was that somehow you adopted their uh, burdensome, legalistic or worldly view of salvation and being right and being a good person, you adopted that. And so now you're, you're trying to work under that old mindset instead of living in the true freedom that you have. It, you are, when you have said yes to Jesus Christ, you are as free as free gets. And it is up to you to stand firm in that freedom. And, and you get to choose, it's already yours, but it, we get to choose if we stand in that freedom and operate out of that freedom. And there are so many things in the world, the worldly culture, the, the way the world says, if you're a nice person, you'll do this, 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 and this. You won't say this. You will say that. You will live like this. You will buy that. You won't buy that. It's, it's so oppressive. And if you, that's just from the world. And then from the church, if you're a good Christian, you will do this. You'll go on this mission trip. You'll serve this many hours, or you will um, love the culture in this way and you won't offend anyone. There's so many uh, burdensome laws and structures and mindsets that the, that the word of God calls elementary. You don't want to go back to elementary school and follow like a, like a kid on the elementary campus. Um, and you don't want to go back into that type of um, immature bondage type thinking um, and childish thinking. You are set free and it is up to us to stand firm in that freedom and to say no to everything that comes in and tries to um, lay on a burden on top of our salvation and say, well, if you're really, truly a strong believer, you'll be doing this. No, it is out of our faith in Christ and our love for him that we do all that we do for him. And so he says, who hindered you? And I believe this is the Lord wants us to ask this. Is there a situation, an environment, a group of people, um, a church setting, a work setting, a worldly setting that is somehow trying to push their elementary principles onto you, their slavery mindsets onto you that get you thinking like them and thinking, oh man, I still have to do this, this, and this for God to be pleased with me or for God to be able to encounter me or use me or build with me. No, it, it, think about what that person or that environment is and say, no more. You will not have an influence over me anymore. And for some of us, that will mean for some of you, that will mean leaving a situation, ending a relationship, or putting huge boundaries up to say, no, I am not going to be hindered in my freedom in Christ anymore. And I love how he says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little bit of religious or worldly uh, mindsets 
can can ruin the whole the whole mind. It can it, a little bit gets in and it can almost act like a weed that just grows and it and it infects the rest of the freedom that you had been experiencing. And so we have to be vigilant to say no to these mindsets and these people and situations that um, that carry these mindsets and try to put them on us. And he says, you were called to freedom, brothers. So through love, serve one another. It is in your freedom that you will be the best kingdom builder, that you will be the most useful in the kingdom of God when you are, when you know who you are and you know that you're free and you can love people in a pure way. It's not out of, well, I'm loving you because then I'll get more points with God or he'll see what I'm doing and maybe he'll bless me more. No, it's just out of pure love because you have already been set free. And so I just want to encourage you with this teaching. I want to um, bless you and say to stop and ask, like the Apostle Paul said, who is this that has hindered you? You were running well. What is this person or situation or environment or mindset that's coming from the world or from the, or from the uh, religious spirit that is all of a sudden standing in your way and saying, well, no, you're not actually free or causing you to take on something, a burden or a structure that the Lord didn't, didn't have for you. And in Christ, you have been set free. Hallelujah.